Former President Trump turning the tables on the media as Republicans ramp up the pressure to release more materials from the unprecedented FBI raid on his home. The press going into full Russia gate mode while trying to disprove Trump's claim that the bureau seized his passports. CBS anchor Nora O'Donnell tweeting, quote, according to a DOJ official, the FBI is not in possession of former President Trump's passports. Trump had accused the FBI of stealing his three passports during the search of his Mar-a-Lago home. The orange menace forced to correct the record with his spokesman posting the email that backs him up, proving the agency removed his travel documents from Mar-a-Lago and would be returning them. The media is also ramping up their good versus evil game. And I would say to our friends who are watching us today, vote as if your life depends on it, because it might. Kevin McCarthy threatened the possible right. next speaker of the House, the Republicans win, threatened an attorney general and said, you'd better lay off, essentially, you'd better lay off Trump or else there's going to be violence. Are we going to survive this? I don't know. The hopeful part of this is that America does have resilience and we do get over moments like this. And remember how this raid was urgently needed to protect national security? Turns out Attorney General Merrick Garland sat on his butt and waited weeks to approve the search warrant. And we still don't know what the underlying evidence that was used to justify agents going through Melania's <laughs> wardrobe. Right now, the DOJ recommends to keep that sealed. But a judge set a Thursday hearing to determine whether the public gets to see it or not. Senator Lindsey Graham says the American public needs transparency now. We need the affidavit. Show your cards. Uh, Merrick Garland can't have it both ways. He can't give us the inventory, the warrant, without telling us why it was necessary. Without the affidavit, we're, we're flying blind in the dark, and the American people are going through too much pain, too much heartache on this endless effort to destroy Donald Trump. Judge, welcome back. Thank you. You were missed. Really? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I missed you, too. Aww. And you and you and you. You I didn't miss, because you weren't here when I left. I <laughs> doesn't mean, I don't mean anything. Okay, let me tell you what I think. Yeah, okay, I, I, won't, I won't even ask you a question. Don't, just, don't, just, just, I'm just going to throw the turn right, on the battery. Let's, let's remember who's going to be conducting this hearing on Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's the same judge who signed uh, the warrant. Right. Okay? So you've got this judge who signed a warrant that apparently was messed up from the get-go, and mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. If it were a search warrant, and they made a decision to go beyond a, a subpoena with a court order, there had to be some exigent circumstance. There had to be some emergency. Then we find out that Merrick Garland waited weeks before he actually made a final decision on that. And then we find out that even before then, in June, the president was cooperating with the, uh, uh, the NARA people, the National Archives people, who sent him a thank you note for cooperating. So with this hearing, the judge has to decide, look, we've got, we've got the American public has an interest in this, but the Department of Justice is saying, no, we don't want you to release this affidavit, the basis for the warrant, because we think it will compromise whatever investigation we're doing, mm -hmm. that it will cause harm to certain people if it's being released, and that it doesn't serve a public interest, and that there is sensitive information, and they'll get a roadmap to where we're going. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, in my 30 years in law enforcement, I have never heard heard of a, of a defendant, and remember, this is a criminal warrant based on a statute that is not a criminal statute, right. the National yeah. Archives record. And so what he's saying, the president of the United States, the ex-former president is saying, release it. I don't care what it says. I'm not worried about what it says. So this judge is in a box. The judge has to say, hey, wait a minute, when well, we've got the defendant himself who's not a party, the, uh, the supposed wannabe defendant, he's not even a party, he's saying let it all out. You know, the judge then has to decide, was it a wholesale fishing expedition? Now he knows America's tuned into this. They took passports. The media, based on Nora O'Donnell saying, oh, they didn't take it. You know, it's like we got a warrant, a legitimate warrant from the FISA court after we lied, after Christopher Steele did a dossier that Hillary Clinton paid for. But no worries, justice is still good with the FBI. And if you believe that, then you got a problem. But in the end, <laughs> this judge, I think, is going to make a decision that it's got to be released 
that they will only redact certain parts of it. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, I think there's egg on the face of Merrick Garland, the Department of Justice and the FBI. Yeah, enough to make it 10 egg omelet, Dana. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't realize we're going to have Michael Beschloss in Besch How do you say his name? Oh, that's right. All right. Whatever his name is. This is the same guy that tweeted about uh, tweeted the Rosenbergs yeah. uh, execute like they sold uh, they mm -hmm. sold uh, Secrets. Sold secrets yeah. to Moscow, and they were executed. The inference being that Trump would be executed too. Who? How? What right does he have? A, a lot of uh, the historians have been concerned for the last—is it seven years now—about mm -hmm. norms and institutions mm -hmm. and the protection of the Constitution, et cetera. And I was just thinking about um, this it, when you were talking, Judge. The defendant is not even really a defendant yet, no, right? Not yet. No. So. And we still believe in innocent until proven guilty, and that's in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And we still believe that the burden is on the prosecution. To, so at this point, I don't understand how he could also say the norms of the country are at risk, but also tweet something that basically says Donald Trump is guilty of selling secrets to the <laughs> Russians. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that, given all of those things, that doesn't make sense. And I do wish that it's with, with, on the media side of things, I know you want to be first, but it's more important to be right. And the whole passport thing just stirred the pot even further to make people less convinced that this is on the up and up. Yeah, same with the nuke stuff. It's like oh. people just, it, it, it just sounds so much like Russian collusion, Joey. And the other thing, too, I've, you, we, you hear about why do they go into Melania's closet. There could be a really simple answer to that, that, that maybe that's where the safe was. Mm -hmm. Why don't they say that? Or what, why aren't they saying that? I think I wouldn't acknowledge that either if I were yeah. them because it's, it's way too low-hanging fruit. It's fun. I mean, you yeah. see millions of Merrick Garland and, you know, elaborate evening gowns now. Yes. Um, you know, look at where we are as a country right now. Because of, of what happened at Mar-a-Lago, half the country, or at least the, the politically active, charged right half, thinks President Trump is being persecuted unfairly once again. And the other half of the country would just assume have President Trump, uh, I guess, executed for treason. Mm -hmm. Even those are polar opposites. There's a lot of in-between. But why would the FBI, why would the Biden administration take steps to put us in this position today? It's not to say that Trump deserves special treatment. I understand the argument that those documents probably belong to the United States government and needed to find their way back there. It sounds like they're negotiating on, on how to keep those things safe. Seems like they were in a really good agreement, a really good place. And then they said because of an FBI source and surveillance... They had reason to believe that those documents weren't as secure as they wanted them to be. And that was the precipice of this raid. That's what caused it. And you take a step back and say, Trump doesn't deserve special treatment. But the American people don't deserve to be thrown into another polarizing situation where we sit around and have arguments where we could be having discussions, where we sit around and say, oh, my God, the government's going after Trump yet again. Or we sit around and say, oh, Trump's trying to sell our nuclear secrets to the Soviets. I don't believe either one of those are wholesale true but you got a lot of reason for people to sit around and make those arguments yeah. now because of this, in my opinion, careless action. You know, Richard, what happens when you have a poorly made burrito? It falls apart when you're driving. <laughs> and I think that's what's happening here, that this narrative is falling apart as the media yeah. drives it, and they don't know what to do. What are your thoughts besides agreeing wholeheartedly <laughs> with me? Well, I won't do that, and I don't eat burritos while I'm driving. Um, but I have this closed-circuit camera footage of you doing that. Do you really? Yes, I have. I do. Really? We're going to be showing it in the B block. Yes. Really? You got to consult my lawyers before you do that one. Um, a couple things here. Listen, I think there's a lot of media speculation uh, on, on all sides, right? Both on the right and the left, people are trying to speculate what they, were, were we in Melania's closet, were we not in Melania's closet? Everybody's trying to speculate what these 11 doc classified or confidential documents that were raided from, the, that were taken from Mar-a-Lago. I think we have to wait to see that. We'll find out tomorrow when this, we'll find out on the 18th when this judge has this hearing. I think we should release the affidavit. Normally, judges don't do that because you don't want to tarnish the reputation of the defendant, but because he wants it released, let's release it and let's get to the bottom of it. But with that being said, I think... There's far too much speculation. And I, I also think that, you know, when people are like, oh, this is a faulty warrant, think about the levels of clearance that this warrant had to go through. Not only was it signed off by Christopher Wray, who was appointed by Donald Trump to be the head of the FBI, but it was also appointed by, it was also signed off by Merrick Garland. And remember, he has decades on the federal bench. And progressives have knocked Merrick Garland for being too slow, too judicious, but that's what judges do. They're judicious. And so I think he's very judicious. And then on top of that, it went to a federal judge, and then the federal judge said, based on this information, based on this evidence, 
Our own Jackie Heinrich reported that it's very likely that the person, the part of this evidence is somebody from his security detail. His Secret Service detail, sworn officers of the court, saw classified documents. They have a mandatory ability, they have a mandatory rule to report, and they reported that we saw those documents. Oh, no, 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 no. Are oh, they wow. not officers of the court? Could you Honor? imagine yeah. putting your yeah. life in the hands of someone who, who wants to rat you out over that? Like, yeah, but imagine, their job hey, is to protect the I want you to take a bullet States. for me. Yeah, you know what? If, up, if Merrick them. Garland is so judicious, uh, how come he called parents domestic terrorists and sick the FBI <laughs> on them? I have a little trouble with that being judicious. All right. Me too. By the way, Melania's Closet sounds like a sitcom on Hallmark. <laughs> no, it Up sounds next, like Milan. a great place to shop. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> it could or be just really hide. Documents for yeah. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.